Good evening, and welcome to our virtual Good Friday services. I'm Pastor Andrew, Next Gen Pastor here at Castian Church, and today we will participate with the church around the world in the ancient tradition of Good Friday services. Tonight, we model our services over what's called a seven last word service. The four gospel writers in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all give accounts of Jesus' words on the cross, and between the four of them, we know of seven things Jesus says as he is on the cross on our behalf. Those seven statements are often focused on during Good Friday services. As we look at these statements from our Lord, we will stop after each to sing, to meditate, to pray. So please join me in this time. Today we will begin with a song and then a full minute of silence as we mourn as a community. We'll mourn the last year, lost friends, lost time to the quarantine. Of course, we will mourn our sin. The silence will be broken by what's called the somber bells. You'll hear a bell rung 40 times, one ring for each lash received by our Lord. On the screen, you'll see the Ten Commandments as we remember it was our failure to keep God's law that leads to the execution of Jesus Christ. So if you'd like to begin with me, we will begin in this note. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And now we'll have a full minute of silence, which will be broken by the somber bells. Hear now the gospel of our Lord, according to his servant Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 and 34. 
When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified him. And the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide for his garments. This is the word of the Lord. Let us confess our sins together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promise declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Hear now the gospel of Jesus Christ according to his servant Luke. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does the cross accomplish and how? We'll talk about the how after a bit, but the what of the cross is this. Because of our Savior's sacrifice on the cross, we can follow him into the presence of our God. It is the way to heaven. The man who is crucified with Jesus, who asks for mercy, did not have any way to prove that he was a changed man. He hung on the cross, soon to die, on the cross because he was a criminal. And some of, the, some of his last words, he asks that God would remember him, that Jesus would remember him. His plea for mercy is heard, and he's assured paradise. Let us together plea for God's mercy, knowing that he will hear us. And let us together say these ancient words. I will lift my hand in the air when it's the congregation's turn. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hear now the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to his servant John. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then, his, then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our church tradition, we do not often speak of Mary, the mother of Jesus. It causes us to wade into the debate on whether or not we are acknowledging her as more high than other Christians. It causes us to get into conversations we'd rather not have with some of our other Christian neighbors who may give her too high of a place in the economy of heaven. Today, we're not reflecting on how to view Jesus' mother, Mary, or her role in the church. Let us instead take a moment and notice that Jesus assigns a disciple to take care of this widow. 
Without Jesus, Mary, an old woman, all by herself, would have lost any security and probably fallen into a state of desperate poverty. But God makes sure that a representative of his church would be there to tend to her needs. This still holds true today. Our Lord still expects that we would meet the needs of the poor, the widow, the stranger. We might like to imagine that our focus on the cross can make up the gap in our care for the marginalized. But here is this third word of Jesus from the cross, reminding us that as the Savior is dying for our sins, he is pointing the church to the needs of people on the margins, including his own mother. Let us bring our petitions to God. I will proclaim a petition, and you will respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, for the forgotten among us, that they would see their most basic needs met and glorify you, O Lord, for your provision. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who mourn the loss of a loved one, whether gone by the coronavirus or gone by another way, may our sadness be tempered by the promise of eternal life in Christ Jesus and his resurrection. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those on the front lines of our shared social fabric, for the police, for the fire department, for EMTs, that they may know safety in their jobs and that they may have peace in their rest, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the medical community, for those who have put their lives and their health at risk to guard our health amidst the crisis, protect their families from the virus, protect them from burnout, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely and the forgotten, those who feel invisible and disconnected in a world blanketed with a false sense of connection through modern technology. May they know the comfort of human community, the nearness of the Holy Spirit whom you have sent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, your body, broken as it may be, may we conform to the image and likeness of your Son. In his name, may we care for these groups who we have prayed for today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear now the gospel of Jesus Christ according to his servant Mark. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he's calling Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Lord and Savior had spent eternity past in perfect fellowship with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. But on the cross, the sin of mankind rests on his shoulders. As Jesus has become the sin of man, God must turn his face away. The fellowship that they shared must be broken. So our Lord cries out with the words of Psalm 22, My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? Let us sing together as we examine our Lord on the cross. One, two, three, four.
from his head to his hands his feet so love and sorrow meet or thorns compose so rich a Hear now the gospel of Jesus Christ according to his servant John. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, I thirst. I said earlier that we would discuss the how of the cross. The what of the cross is that Jesus has made heaven available to us. The how is wrapped up in a word used by the Apostle Paul and the Apostle John. The word is propitiation. Jesus on the cross is the sponge that absorbs God's wrath onto himself. Propitiation. God's wrath is absorbed into Jesus on our behalf. Propitiation. We, as temporal beings, have sinned against the eternal God. So while our actions are not eternal, the consequences are. And if God allows the consequences to go unpunished, God can no longer claim to be perfectly just. His wrath must be satisfied somehow by someone. And on the cross, the fullness of God's wrath is poured out on the innocent son. So tortured is he that he would call out, I thirst. But his thirst remains as he refuses sour wine. We often teach the cross in terms of justice, mercy, and grace. Justice is that the punishment of sin is realized. It is realized on Jesus. Mercy is present in that those who should experience the wrath of God do not experience the wrath of God. That's us. We are given a pass on the punishments of God. That is mercy. Finally, grace is present in that while we deserve the wrath, we get blessing. We get dominion. There's something transactional that takes place as the one who deserves the blessing gets wrath. And the one who deserves wrath gets blessing. Reflecting on the hymn writer who says in his his hymn, Rock of Ages, let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed, be of sin a double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not only are we saved from wrath, that is, given God's mercy, we are then made pure, that is, given God's grace. Hear now the gospel of Jesus Christ according to his servant John. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Isaiah 53. Who has believed... What he has heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, as he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. 
he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned, every one, to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and yet made his grave with the wicked and with the rich, man in his death, although he has done no violence, and there is no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put, on, put him to grief, with his soul makes an offering for guilt. He shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper him, or shall prosper in his hands. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for transgressors. Hear now the gospel of Jesus Christ according to his servant Luke. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. While the sun's light failed, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Were you there?
sanctified my glory. Please read this closing prayer with me. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and of the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Hear now the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Our service is ended. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord.